to the beginning. So Charles, now are you there, are you there Charles? Can you see Charles? So Charles, I will shortly hand over to you for the opening prayer. Thank you. So at this moment, recording starts now. Ipukia Nasirani Kiripas o Aratan Wara. Tawari the main one Narawaka yo, Nikarwa to Kina. Make a total on Naran Yasu Christo. Amen. Koraba, Charles, and thank you very much. Come na Maori, everyone. Kona Maori. Kia ora tato katoa. On behalf of Tamaki Paimahira, Auckland War Memorial Museum, I welcome you all to the Zoom uh, panel discussions. My name is Maara Maeva, and I work as a learning specialist at Auckland Museum. This is a very special week indeed for the people of Kiribati in that it is the first time that the language has been formally recognized by the Ministry of Pacific Peoples and therefore added as part of the annual celebrations of Pacific languages. I'm just moving on to the next page. But before this one, um, I'd like to, to take this opportunity to thank and acknowledge uh, all, starting of course uh, with the Auckland Museum team. First of all, the learning and public programs team. Thank you very much all for coming together to make this uh, uh, celebration of Kiribati Language Week possible. I also like to take this opportunity to take to thank the marketing and digital team. Thank you very much. And also to thank Tom, who's no longer with us because he was the one that filmed uh, the video earlier on. Thank you very much, natural history team, for looking after the tikkun and sharing uh, the object, the the tanga. Our human history team, thank you um, uh, fully, and uh, and the team for sharing uh, the um, the ornaments. Document heritage team, uh, Paula and them, thank you very much. Online cenotaph. Uh, well, I'd like to thank and acknowledge also the work of the Pacific Language Week focus group, our Teulewa team. Most importantly, I'd like to thank our Kiribati knowledge holders. Um, and that, of course, as Baisekatum. Baisekatum comes from Tarawa, but now he finds home in Kirikiriro, which means Hamilton. Dr. Janet O'Connor, of course, I'm not sure whether I can see you, but anyway, thank you very much for being part of the initial uh, visit to the museum. I'd like also to acknowledge and thank you, uh, Dr. Masikora Itonga Marai, Maria, sorry, uh, for she was involved with the filming uh, session. 
I'd like also to thank Charles for the organization of the filming session as some weeks ago. Now I move on to the screen in front of you to welcome and introduce our panel uh, team for this evening. First on your screen there, I will start from the top left. I'd like to welcome Nay Kaitai Watson. Kaitai has done a lot of work for our Kiribati community, whether it be in the culture, arts, language, basically in, in matters all relating to Kiribati. So thank you very much, uh, Kaitai. Kaitaita comes from the, the island of Tapitewe. She now finds home in Coromandel. Kaitaita, please, can you wave to everyone so that we know who you are? There we go. Thank you very much. Koraba. Now we move on to our next um, panelist. And that is welcoming you, uh, Nay Luisa Humphrey. Can you? Can you wave to all? There we go. Krabba. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Luisa. Uh, Luisa. Luisa comes from the island of Korea and also Abain. She now finds home in Huntley. Krabba, thank you very much, Luisa. Thirdly, Dr. Janet O'Connor. So Janet, if you are, if you are, if you can hear us, can you all greet us in 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 Kiribati, please? Maori, come not then in Maori. Koraba, thank you very much, uh, Janet. Uh, welcome. Uh, Janet comes from the island of Nikunau, and she resides now. Here in Tamaki, Makaura, Auckland. Thank you very much, Janet. And then finally, of course, uh, Charles Enoka, uh, who has facilitated uh, the, the language week uh, preparations up to this stage. So I'd like to say thank you very much, uh, Charles. And now my Haramai, Haramai, picking my Charles Kakamai. Uh, Charles. Heyo from the island of Butaritari and Tarawa. And of course, Charles uh, reside live here in Tamaki, Makaurau. Thank you very much, Charles. Now, I will introduce also our museum team. Oh, now first on the list there, I'd like to welcome uh, Fully Pereira. Fully is our Pacific curator here at Auckland Museum, and she comes from the human history team. Fully, please wave to our panelists, to everyone. Maloney, thank you very much. Our other museum staff who will be with us tonight. Uh, I welcome you. Uh, Rebecca Bray. Rebecca, please wave to everyone. Thank you, Rebecca. So Rebecca is a collections manager from our natural history team. So on your screen now, you should be seeing this Kaumatu. If you can see the screen with the Komato on, can you wave back to me, please? Oh. So we will now move on. We will play a two minute video. This two minute video covers the time 
that knowledge holders came into the museum a little way back. Uh, this is all building towards this week here. Oops. Now, I will step back and enjoy the video. Miriam, please. No. No, I can't. The strings are tight mm -hmm. so that when you push. Okay. So sorry for that. We'll, because the sound just came now. So we'll start from the front. It's only two minutes. Thank you, Miriam. Over to you. Basi Correct. Bless us all and bless those who are supporting this program. We ask the Father humbly. In the name of thy beloved son, Jesus Christ, amen. If, if you see how the, the strings are tied, mm -hmm. so that when you push that thing down, it spins, it spins the main thing. You know, the string for the upaba, what is it made out of? Well, it's made from uh, coconut fiber. It would be good for the children to be able to know, understand where we got them from, create this beautiful string that we used to have in the in the past and we don't have to go and buy things, we just get it from the coconut trees. This is the Tumera. Part of the, the, the costume that is worn by women above their skirt. So this is one of it that is uh, made of shells and these shells are collected from the, the ocean. The Tumera reflects the importance of our Ladies, because that's our tauri in those days, like money, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, the katao is woven by a string, and it's made from the coconut shell, mm -hmm. tied uh, in the, uh, by the, in the waist of the lady. It re represents strength. Tighten your belt. Mm -hmm. And this is the kilobat. This is the teriri. Very, the shark's teeth are very sharp. They only cut the main nerves. Akiripa's people, they don't they, yeah. fight to kill, kill you right away. Mm -hmm. They show how brave you are. So they cut you like this and they, you're ten, eh? And then if you are defeated, you say, okay, I surrender. You own the land, eh? You know, in Akiripa's, we have, we are very keen in dancing. And most of our dances were, we try to imitate the, the birds. The hun is not an a indigenous bird, it's a migratory mm -hmm. bird. The navigators watch them and they oh, where are they eating now? Along the coast, good. And then when these birds go further inland, then it gives the message, storm will be soon coming. But thanks for the opportunity that we have been given. So thank you very much, uh, Miriam. So that's, that's the short, uh, brief video. Once again, all as part of celebrations of the uh, Kiribati Language Week. Now you may have seen uh, some Taonga there that you may have seen in the video because those Taonga are, those collections items, are actually what we are going to talk about tonight. The first item object here is the cone. But right now, I will step back and invite uh, Rebecca 
to come forward, please just share and explain a little bit about the provenance of this um, Taonga. At this moment, I hand over to you, Rebecca. Come now, Mori, everybody. Uh, ko Rebecca Toko Ingoa. Uh, I'm Senior Collection Manager in Natural Sciences, so I kind of oversee the looking after of all the Tonga in the museum. Um, so it's been wonderful working on these Pacific Language Weeks and seeing what we have in the collections from the various islands. Um, so when we had a look to see what uh, Tonga we were looking after from Kiribati, um, we uh, had found these three individuals of Tekun. Um, so they were collected in 1937 um, by uh, Sergeant Buddle. Um, and he um, had been on a trip to get a bus to look at the solar eclipse um, with a few people from New Zealand and other places as well. Uh, so while they were there, they did some scientific collections. And what you see here is what we call a study skin um, for our sciences. So what you see front of house in museums are often um, taxidermy animals, so like they are in life. Uh, but a lot of our collections uh, look like this, where we can see all we need to for the scientific study. Um, but you can pack them in more neatly so they can be um, fit more collections in a small space, but also make sure they're protected from getting damaged by light and dust. Um, so Tekun or Pluvialis fulva, as we call it in the scientific taxonomic name, um, it's a really widely, it's a specific species, it's quite widely spread. Um, it's migratory, as was mentioned in the video. So they breed up in Alaska and Siberia in their summer, feeding on all the insects there but it gets very cold and very snowy. So like most people, they prefer to move to the Pacific um, to ride out the winter. So recently, some scientists have managed to put tiny little trackers mm -hmm. on the birds. Thank you, William. Um, and actually track where individual birds go. So they go between 16,000 to 27,000 kilometers, depending on the bird. So you can see here Jojo on the right, um, was one individual who was tracked, went from Alaska uh, to Hawaii um, and then to Kiribati to stop there before moving on to Tonga as well. So they moved throughout, um, stopping in Kiribati both, in both directions um, so that they can store up fat for the very long journey um, and spend some wonderful time on the beaches there. Um, and sometimes they'll have non-stop flights of three to eight days at a time. So they really need to spend um, the time on these islands, filling up on good food and having a good rest. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, Kuraba, and thank you very much, um, uh, Rebecca. Let's all show our appreciation to uh, Rebecca by actually waving so that I can see you all. Thank you very much. So now we move to our next um, collections item. Uh, that is the Tekataute Nana and Tekataute Tumara. I will step back now and invite uh, Fully to come forward and share and talk a little bit about uh, this town. Over to you, Fuli. Thank you, Mara. Come now, Māori, everybody. Um, firstly, on behalf of the Pacific team at Auckland Museum, I'd just like to say what an honour it is and a pleasure to have um, our old friends, um, our elders and knowledge holders, um, Guy Data Watts and Louisa Humphrey, Dr. Janet O'Connor and Charles Enoka. Thank you so much for being with us and granting us the um, opportunity to learn more from you. I, um, for those of you who don't know, um, these are the same knowledge, knowledge holders that, we, that worked with us through the Pacific Collections Access Project. Um, and um, yeah, I just, I can't say 
enough about how honoured we are that you um, were able to spend so much time with us during PCAP. And so again, I acknowledge you um, tonight. Uh, just a very uh, brief, um, not so much about the objects because um, our knowledge holders um, way, know way much more than I do about them, but a uh, little bit about uh, maybe Honor and Harry Maud who gifted these um, objects to us. We had two quite large um, presentations from the Mauds, one in 1936 and one in 1940, so that um, our Kiribas, uh, our Maud Kiribas collection numbers about 940 of um, Kiribati's um, cultural um, treasures. Um, so it's a huge collection. The Kiribati collection is one of the largest Pacific collections in, um, in our Pacific collections. And Harry was, uh, Harry and Honor were both trained anthropologists. And in 1929, I think, they first went to Kiribati and they had a long association with Kiribati, over 20 years of um, association with Kiribati um, and other areas of the Pacific. And we were very lucky that they um, gifted us over the years um, a very extensive collection. Uh, Harry actually became the resident commissioner of Kiribati, then known as the Gilbert and Alice Islands from 1946 to about 1949. And he also worked for the South Pacific Commission from 1948 to 1957. And from 1957 to 1961, Harry was a research fellow at the ANU, which is the Australian National University in Canberra. And Harry um, is a very good, as the, a good anthropologist, he made copious notes about um, the collections when he was gifted them through the 1920s and 30s. And so we have um, notes um, that Harry made for what objects were made. And I'm sure Gaita and, and um, Louisa will remember the, um, some of the very old names that were gifted to us by Harry that are no longer used. So um, that was really interesting for us to kind of unpack how names of objects have changed over time. But Harry was, um, he didn't think of himself as an academic, but of course he was. He published a lot of papers and articles about Kiribati and um, its language and culture. And Harry was born in Bihar in India in 1906 and died in Canberra, Australia in 2006, about a month after his 100th birthday celebration. So he lived, he lived a long and prosperous life and we're very grateful that he's left us um, a legacy of some Kiribati material. Yeah, thank you. Rabba, and thank you very much, uh, Fully. I support and talk to you in our acknowledgement of, of, our, uh, of our knowledge holders. So thank you very much again. Let us show our appreciation fully by actually waving back. Thank you very much. So, Burukram program, we continue on to the next part. Uh, and that will be the actual conversation. So while well, Miriam is putting up our, our screen, the next slide, which is the actual tomorrow, our conversations. So now I hand over to you, uh, Charles and Charles will then facilitate uh, the conversations from now on. So Charles, I hand over to you now. Kuraba. Kuraba Mara, the Banting and I meet the Can you put in the, can you uh, put the presentation on? The, I'd like to see the, uh, the, the bird. So we can have that um, team discussion, please. 
on Khalid Narod Ramiruz. We are going to talk about the Kun. So we want to keep it uh, brief and short. And I'd like to invite uh, Keteta and also Luisa and Dr. Chanitz to, first of all, that we uh, hear from you. You share your knowledge about the objects that we are going to talk about. So first of all, Tekun, Pacific Coat and Plava. Uh, what about you, uh, Keteta? Can you please um, uh, share your knowledge and share some insights? Uh, Anything you know about the Kun, please. So I'll give you the opportunity and welcome the Ketel. Up to you. Okay. The Kun. I live near the beach in the Coromandel, uh, south yes. of Fangmata. And it's, uh, I often, we walk on the beach and there's uh, protected birds here called dotrels. And to me, every time I see one, it reminds me of Tukun. Because mm -hmm. the way they walk, the one day he came along the, the sand and picking. The thing I was, uh, I remember about Tukun, I don't see them on the beach in Kiribati. I saw them just by the houses under the coconut trees, uh, in between the trees here. There's, there's one near our house that often sort of, I suppose, uh, looking for something to eat in the grassy bit under the coconut trees. So that's my memory of the Kun, and that's the also we refer to it, I suppose he'll come later on, in our dancing, a foot movement, because there's uh, that fast and right footed on the mat or on the soil, and then stop, one leg up, and then off you go again. And the, the dancers, if you watch the dancers, you see that, especially the men, and that's all I can add for the time being. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Kai Teta. Uh, um, so now, can we have some um, uh, sharing from you, uh, Louisa Humphrey? Uh, Louisa is from the island of Korea and Bayang. Bayang. Wow. Um, yeah, we always look up uh, to uh, Louisa as our mother in the community with great knowledge, uh, very deep knowledge of our culture. So it is a blessing that we also have uh, Luisa uh, alongside with uh, Keteta uh, with us at uh, this time. So once again, I'd like to invite you, uh, Luisa, to share any significance of the bird, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, Aya, kang abon na nung wiring kan dede ni Gilbert, parehara arawi kin dede ni Gilbert sa yo. Na yata yaya ba yaya ro ay ka akan nung ra na den den aruro ay yo ngaya to ikaraw tay kan dede ni matang tuta na na ba bawon ni di dan merani dan rani dan dede ni Gilbert. So hello everybody, and I was just saying before that it's our Kiribati language week and inside me I'd like to just fully speak in Kiribati but I know we've got lovely friends joining us tonight and and we would like to share with you what we are sharing um, and what a lovely opportunity it is. Um, to me Dukun, just like Adeta said it's it's um, it's a dainty little bird and and as Gadetta was saying uh, uh, we'll probably cover that a little bit later on when we talk about the dancing a little bit with the other artifacts but it, they're dainty little birds and and when I grew up in in Guria as a little girl they were more abundant but as I moved to Tarawa you you don't see it and Tarawa is the main island and it's really very well populated and I think that might be why the birds are, um, are not so abundant there because they they like to be secluded and 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 um, have space to themselves. So um, yeah, the the 
they're lovely birds and they're very well. They're, people talk about Dokun um, a lot in Gidibas and, and I guess we see them when they come to enjoy the, the beautiful warm weather that we have, get away from the cold where they come, come from or visit as well. And I, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not an expert on it. And I can remember them as a young girl. So I don't know whether they actually breed in Kiribati or they breed somewhere else. Um, but yeah, we, you see them a lot. And um, obviously the, the, the Kiribati people must take notice of Tukun to be able to actually have our dances. Um, some of the dances uh, reflect the movement of Tukun. And, and that's kind of what I can add at the moment to how nice it is that it can be preserved like this. And I, I hope it doesn't ever be extinct. But we have one here that if people have not seen one live, there's one that in the museum that can be seen. Thank you, everybody. Come drop it. Thank you, Luisa. Um, now let's move on to... Um, our um, next um, um, speaker, Dr. Janet, I understand that she spent most of her life, lifetime overseas studying, and but uh, let's hear from her. From what does uh, what does he want to share about our the, the takun? Because uh, let's start with the word takun. Takun uh, means in Kiribati means the skin. So we remember when we had the opportunity with our Kaumatua Tonumani. Um, and he explained it to us that the kun, yeah, simply it's the kun. So the bird is the skin. You, there is no meat. It's all fully covered with skin. And that's where the name come from. Anyway, I'll hand it over to Dr. Janet. Uh, please say any, um, any knowledge, any information that you would like about the kun, please. I the Nagatayan <laughs> dominant <laughs> In the show line of Abimama Puria. On Ganagana, so related by Yona on the Mayer, the Kun, the Ganga Tekami, Yuria Mani, and Ayari, irrigated the Mayopa, originated by Yam and the Tater and Oka, Bukina by Erangin Tana, Erangin Neoa, the Menayo on the show line, and what are you the Karaka Banganabotara, the show line, Puria, Erangin best known or right there, the men at the related how we relate the dance at the kun, the, the bird at the kun. Okay, just very briefly in English. What I was uh, sharing in, in Kiribati is that um, the, 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 the kun, the, the bird, is found mostly in the northern and the central part of Kiribati where there's a lagoon because apparently these birds like to feed on the shorelines of the lagoons. Now, the southern Kiribati, most of the southern Kiribati islands don't, don't have lagoons. So we normally see this, a lot of these birds um, in, the, in the northern and the central part of, um, of Kiribati, the, the Gilbert Island group. So, and that is where uh, relating this bird to the dance, which is called Nikun is the, the name of the dance that is predominantly known as the dance from central Kiribati, Sabimama Puria. That, that's uh, how it is because apparently this bird is predominant in the, in the central Kiribati. And so 
the choreographers in that those parts of the, the Kiribati, they choreograph a dance that's called the Wainikun to imitate the movement of this bird that they see a lot of on the shorelines in their lagoons. Um, so that, that's what I can share about the, this bird, the Kun, because I think our interest in this bird is in relation to the dance that is very beautiful dance that's mostly um, done by men and it's, it mostly comes from central Kiribati and it's called the Oyani Kun. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Dr. Janet. And that is uh, pretty much the the, the, the basis, uh, the, just the basic information about the uh, the kun. And um, we will give the opportunity to uh, all the to those who are joining us in, in this Zoom for the questions. But now we will move on to our next object. So, Miriam, please. Ornament. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the ornament, uh, and in particular to Te Katau Tenana and Te Katau Te Chumara. So we are so grateful we have the, uh, the, uh, the our ladies here who are the knowledge holders who may be able to share their knowledge about the, uh, these uh, objects. So again, we start uh, with uh, Keteta. Please, uh, any significance about the object, especially Te Katau Tenana, what is it? Why, why do they call it Te Katau Tenana? Uh, how do they make it? What do they make it out of it? Um, when do they wear them? Um, yeah, and we, we go from there. So uh, thank you, uh, Ketet. Ha ha. Te Katau Tenana. Tess is purely made with coconut shells, rings. Yeah. And I'm afraid I can't really say how they drill them. They didn't have drills like they, they have now. But they have some uh, other ways, so, uh, like a drill in yeah. there, using hand, not battery or anything. But anyway, that's uh, normally, from what I understand, it's the old shells, coconut shells, that's a bit worn out because they're one reason they're darker in color and also they're worn out. They're easier to cut in rings. That's my, <laughs> my version of it. They make it dark, that goes on the black skirt. It's normally for dancing. Mm -hmm. You don't wear it in, uh, in other ways. Normally, when you're, you're prepared to get, dance, to get up dancing as a woman or a girl, that's your costume. Your black skirt, then comes the tumor and the katao. Mm -hmm. And then that's, it can be smoked as well to make it black or dark. So that's, uh, that's uh, I, I, I'm just sticking to the tikatao. Is that okay? That's, uh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then we'll uh, go to, we'll talk about the, the two matter uh, later. Is yeah. that uh, is that what you expect me to say? This is a whole lot of <laughs> just sharing that, and mm -hmm. that it can be one strand, one ring, or two rings. Mm -hmm. And the harder your grandfather or your uh, dad or uncles work, you can have three. That's unusual. Two mm -hmm. is a normal run of it. But mm. there's a lot of work there. So, and then Tokora, which is the string inside and threaded through it. So that's, that's me for now, I think. Yeah, thank you for the for opportunity. Yeah, uh, any addition from you, uh, uh, Louisa Humphrey? Uh, and, and I mean, why do we wear them? Any significance, any, any purpose of it? Uh, when, when is the right time to wear them? Uh, you, go, you go from there? Cakatau tenana. Yang erang erang kata-kata kita di 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 lah 
the part of our costume in the in my year can it the the run the 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 car row me the 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 this matter me yeah to so just just to follow on from what Gaetano was saying um you know how hard it must be to actually do this I I I must say I've never physically seen it being made um I see once in my family that have been passed on from generation to generation and i can imagine just how hard it is to make so passing it on is a good thing if you can uh, preserve these as part of the family maybe several sets of them and, and they get passed on um it'll it'll make it easier for the people that actually make it because without the tools that we have now they must have been quite a quite a a feat to to complete these sets um yeah and i and i believe i'm not a i'm not an expert on on kiribas dance but i observe it and i am very interested in it and and i i believe that the the women that dance and have these uh the katao on their skirts the more they make their their hips move the more these will click and so if you can click these um uh katao while you're dancing you're really good if they if people can hear you clicking these your your hip movements are just right they they there um and of course it's it's ornamental it's it's lovely to look at and the, before a dance is performed they're oiled and and there's a quite a bit of preparation to go with it um yeah and i think in in the video that we saw of um uh the the museum with with the group that went i think we saw our old drill that must have been used to actually make these and and that would have been you know expertly used as well and and i would love one day before i leave this earth to actually see one being made because i love it i just i just think it's a it's a uniquely um attractive thing and and hard to make and 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 how good is it that we can utilize our coconut um shells that would otherwise just be thrown away yeah so that's kind of uh, it from me i'm sure others would probably add other other stories about the the kata the kata de nana yeah well thank you but uh the luisa i'm free um yeah, yeah. Well, let's hear and so something from Dr. Janet. Any additions? And and, and what about? Let's look at the Katau Tumara. Uh, yeah, the, let's talk about that. Uh, any um, any thoughts, um, Janet, uh, the Dr. Janet? Um, the 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 Tumara, the, 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 the these two things, the Tumara and the Katau, they have to be worn together. It's a complete dancing um, costume for a woman. You cannot wear. The tumera without the katao and vice versa, and they always go with a black skirt, and um, so it's it's the formal wear. When these are worn, it's it, you can tell that um, it, it signifies a formal function, formal event. And the um, one of the things that uh, they also say that uh, without these, when a girl dances without these, that means that girl is not well cared for not well nurtured by parents so it also signifies the prestige that that the girl that the family that the girl comes from so it is it is important that the two are worn of the the katao the, tumera the, the is made of shells obviously these shells are collected in the ocean they are dried and they the the, in, the snail inside are taken out and then they are carefully um made holes and i think the same hole that is made of the the, the upapa which was shown in the in the museum earlier uh, in the two minute uh, video show it's called the upapa that's the um traditional um drill that is made and it's obviously used to to, to make these in the olden days now obviously they, there's a lot of uh, battery operated drills is that being used but I think it shows like uh, the one talk about the takatao with the coconut shells. 
because each one is made out of a coconut shell. There's, there's going to be, it will require about at least 20 to 30 coconut shells to be, um, to, to be used in order to make these. So it's a lot of hard work. And it, it's like, uh, it, it is, it's very important for, as a complete attire for a formal performance in the traditional way in the Kiribati, for Kiribati women and, and girls. So I think that, that my, my, my contribution is that um, without the other, they cannot be worn and it's a formal event. It, it symbolizes formal uh, function and uh, the, also the prestige of the, the family that, uh, that, that um, presents this when a girl is, um, where a girl wears these two attire that it is, it shows that, oh, this girl is well nurtured, well cared for. That's a real girl. That's now Kiribati's custom. Without this, the, the, you, the girl is not well regarded when she dances without <coughs> this. So that's an important uh, thing. So, yeah, that's, that's all I can add for now. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the insight and the information you shared. Uh, this is um, I, very important to us. Uh, but again, now we are going into the questions and answer. But uh, I would like to give the opportunity to um, um, uh, members of the panel. Uh, we, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Mescora Maria and also Petro Chan. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. And um, Again, uh, if you would like to say anything, any knowledge, any any informations that, that are, um, you know, in particular to the to the three objects we've spoke, we've spoken about, um, the especially the kun, the katau tenana, the katau So I'd like to uh, give the time now to Ms. Kora and Maria. Please. Can you unmute Dr. Mescora Maria, please? Uh, Miriam. Thank you. Howdy, everyone. Howdy. Thank you for giving you add on a bit. Um, I would like to add on a bit about the Takatao Tenana. Um, as a young girl, I grew up in Mans, and that is part of our, it's like our chore. When we are finished with the the daily normal, then our grandparents will ask us to go and collect those nana, the coconut um, shells. And what we do with them, with them, we put them in the sea and leave them there for months. When they're in the sea, it sort of make them shiny and black. Then they're taken out and then grand, grandpa will be cutting them into smaller pieces. That's the part that you just sit there for hours and you just sit there and make little, little circles. And then with, it doesn't have the drill, but it's got the, what's the name of that? Like a nail and he will sharpen it. And that's what he used to make a, a hole. And then it is our part to do the, the, the string. So we'll be doing the string for the, the, the katao tenana. And then we put all of them together, then string them, you know, put them all in the string and tie it up and it becomes the takatau tenana. And, and then we'll just put the coconut oil around it. And that makes it shiny and black. And it is a lot of work, but it was, it was fun for us. There was nothing else to do back in the islands. And that was part of what we do to help make all this for our dancing uh, costumes. And for the takatau te sumera, yeah, we also take part in that. We go in the lagoons and we collect them. And then we go with them in the, in the pot. And then grandpa will be making the holes and then we get the, the, the strings and then we start making the takatao te sumera. So it is a privilege that I have been involved in making this because we don't see them now. And thank you the, to the museum that they, they got it in there. So we can still see them these days. I think that's what I can add on to that. Thank you. Oh, wonderful story. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mescora. Uh, Chang, thank you, and we uh, welcome you to the program. Uh, anything you would like to share about the katao, the chumara, the katao tenana, the, the kun? 
Over to you, please walk. You want to unmute the wall? I see him. Miriam, you do you want to unmute uh, Petua, please? Otherwise, I'll give you now the uh, the, the floor is now open to anyone. One more, one more from the from the floor. Any any member? Rich House. Yes, what you are going to tell me. You are going to tell me. You are going to tell me. Nobody <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Hey, um, now I'd like to open the floor to any members of the uh, of the Zoom meeting. Any questions that the, you would like to uh, raise to the to the panel? So if you have a question, you raise your hand and then our um, uh, Mara or uh, the Miriam will unmute. Yes, okay, fully, yep, thank you. Please unmute fully. Um, thank you, Miriam. Um, just curious about tekun and whether any part of that bird is used um you know to in the creation of cultural material if the feathers or bones yeah yeah any thoughts from the team I just uh, want to add to that a little bit. Yeah. I think the significant is that for me, the kun is not a common bird like the kun, the kai. It's very unusual, very different, and you don't see it a lot in where I was growing up. Very rare. And therefore, it becomes quite important. Something, I think, something about our gribus, ngaida kain gribus, kanga ba ye ka akanga ngadegeya. They become very precious. The ones that you got to work hard to get them. And those are the the shells. The tumera is uh, the same where I grew up. You don't see it like you go and pick cockles or uh tortoises no you find them odd bits here and there um, i remember my dad when he goes fishing every time he takes a net 
comes back, you may bring one or two of those, and they're precious to him. So he just keep, keep adding them until it's enough to make it. So I think we are, uh, for me, there's things that are a bit hard to get at or not common. They are the ones that are, are treasured and they make those. And I, the, the coconut shell, you soak it in the sea or bury it in the sea for how many weeks, months. And he comes out, it peels off, and you have that core of it, which is black. And then you oil it, or you smoked it, and you got a, a beautiful tekatao. So I think the, as far as the, kun, the skin and legs, I haven't heard about the, the skeletons or, you know, bones that are, or feathers used in that. But uh, someone else may have uh, experienced that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'd like to um, invite uh, another addition from um, Maskora. Maskora would like to add uh, um, more to the kun. Yes. Maskora. Yeah, uh, Miriam, uh, Dr. Maskora, thank you. Unmute, <laughs> Maskora. Yes, thank you. Um, I just remember one thing um, with <laughs> our other, our other knowledge holder, the the Unumane, um, Basica. He mentioned about the the kun and how they they noticed that during the daytime when they it's calm and and sunny the kun will be staying more in the shoreline and when they start moving to inner land then they notice that it's it's it says that it, it means that there's a storm coming so that's what he mentioned about the kun and how it's related to, to the weather so mm -hmm. i think that's quite an important uh, message to you know like to convey because that's what he mentioned and i learned that from from him last time so thank you I also um, like to acknowledge Koro Kesa uh, joining the Zoom tonight. Thank you, Koro Kesa, for joining us and also the rest of the team. Any particular, um, anything you guys uh, from anyone that you would like to uh, share? Yes, uh, Mara, Mara. Um, Koraba Charles and uh, Koraba to, uh, to, to the panelists that has gone before. But what I'd like to, to add is that, or to ask is that, as the kun is, is heavily involved in dance or its movements and repertoire, then I'm wondering, are there any recalled song, chants pertaining to the kun that anyone tonight <laughs> can enrich? Our Kiribati language week with a chant or song relating to the kun, if not to the kun, to any birds, if if, it, if that matter be. So I give it back to you, Charles uh, Koraba. Okay, thank you, Koraba Mara. And um, yes, uh, in our conclusion, uh, we also uh, play a, um, a, a very short um, um, song. This is the the frigid bird um, song. And that will conclude our um, um, Zoom this evening. But in regards to the Tawai yes, we do have a lot of, um, in, in the community, especially back home in Kiribati, uh, the skills is being passed on and taught to the uh, employees. Yeah, um, we will have another opportunity at another time. But uh, this is the song, uh, Rise Up Kiribati. The and the Jenny na yu are the uku ku na mga uki yu are the puntiman na the kipa o yaka kaya mo yung ana oh ibibite na ko yaka in kirbas iba anaria in rise up anaria in rise up anaria in uku 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 uku
So yeah, the team and also Mara, uh, like you, if you can play that song and that will um, conclude us to the uh, session of the Zoom this evening. You can sing it. No, we will, uh, they will play a song. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and I'd like now to uh, hand it over to you, um, Amara. Um, so, Koraba Charles and the beautiful singing there, and it's beautiful lyrics as well. Kiribati shall rise, and uh, and so on. I love that lyrics. But uh, very good uh, timekeeping, Charles. So we are right on time um so just just an apology to you uh Mas dr masakura i i may not have uh, acknowledged you earlier but uh thank you very much for joining us I, I i may have forgotten that it's good to see you here and it's good to have heard your insights into um into the discussions tonight but again it's all to enrich a uh, kiribati language week uh, 2020. so with that once again, I'd like to thank everyone, our panelists tonight, uh, Kai Taita, uh, Luisa, Dr. Janet, uh, Charles, of course, and of course you, uh, Ms. Cora, uh, Cora, but thank you very much. And also to our team here, uh, Foley, Rebecca, and to all the others that have uh, joined in, which I couldn't see, but I knew there are other people there. Uh, thank you very much. And to all of you, uh, Koraba, thank you very much. And then, and my hope is that uh, we shall all uh, enjoy the rest of Kiribati Language Week. And then, just a reminder to all, Auckland Museum is open again. Please come into the museum and tell your families it's all open. It's the school holidays on. Come and visit the Auckland Museum. Um, so with that, uh, thank you very much again. And Charles, yes. I will hand back to you to close us in a word of prayer. Koraba. Koraba de Mara, and uh, what a wonderful, uh, uh, great work from you, the team of the Auckland Museum. Thank you. I'd like to give the opportunity, please allow me to give this opportunity to uh, Louisa Humphrey. Say a few words in our acknowledgement in Karaparapa and the Bukinda Yamakuri and the Auckland Museum. And Kayagona and then Mr. Prater, the Kiribati Lamus Week. The Shumi. So, can you please unmute uh, Louisa uh, Miriam? Uh, she would like to acknowledge you as well. Louisa?
to our lovely friends from the Auckland Museum. Thank you so much for always treasuring and looking after our, our precious um, uh, artifacts that you hold dearly in your, in your hands and look after so well. Thank you for the opportunity to share tonight. Uh, thank you for always um, being so passionate about the, the things that we, we treasure and, and we appreciate. Um, and I, I think in the past I've said that whenever I go to the Auckland Museum, I always, it always is a very emotional time for me because you see things that, that you know your ancestors made, that your ancestors treasured, that we might not be able to see if it wasn't that it's kept so nicely in a museum like yeah. the Auckland yeah. Museum. We acknowledge the work that you do and we love you dearly and know that we appreciate everything that you do to look after our, our artifacts. Kam nang besin rapa, ada yetang kami, o sedang tangirin kami. Thank you. Rapa. And then as I go to the prayer, Yadu atame amantama ka sikai tau ko ipukin pa ni kapeni. Sikai tau ko ipukin te kakapaya ino na nupungin ni meaura. Ni kawa kina kina pa ayyara pa kau, o ayyara te ayyara pa kasibu. Ay kasi may wakin na yun yun sila. Tatay yun, sila ng mayan ako na kung may hara. Ay pia, riki, di meruro ayo, pa yun ang wana, na kuya, naratanong ra, na kuya na sila ni Kapene. Dabo ay kaya aroon nila na yun. Ay kaya natataro ng Rani Yesu Cristo. Basta kay nila, with our kidibas blessings of the Nauri, the Roy, o the Tapong. Na kuya may nila. Amen. So, good night all. Have a good uh, good night. Enjoy the rest of the language week, Kiribati language week, and the uh, Kiora Maitato. Korapa, korapa. Sabo, korapa.